Now at six, a rocket slams into an apartment building in Kyiv as Ukrainians put up a fierce resistance to the larger, better armed Russian invading forces. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Chris Holmstrom. And I'm Christine Lazar. This is CBS 2 News at 6, streaming on CBS News Los Angeles. The fighting in Ukraine appears to have intensified today as the Russian military closes in on the capital. And tonight, Ukraine says Russian forces have blown up a gas pipeline in the country's second largest city. CBS News' Rick Montana is here now with the latest developments and a lot going on tonight. Yeah, certainly a lot of changes happening pretty quickly. So just in, as Chris mentioned, Russian forces have blown up that gas pipeline in Kharkiv, that's Ukraine's second largest city. We're also learning from the United Nations Refugee Agency that at least 150,000 people have fled Ukraine since the Russian invasion began. An orange glow lights up the sky in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. A large explosion over the southwest part of the city as a news crew prepared for their report. And this dramatic new video showing Ukrainian people standing in front of a Russian tank attempting to stop them from moving forward. Air raid sirens sounded in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, as Russian troops pressed on. On Saturday, a spokesperson for Russia's defense ministry said Russian forces had resumed their offensive in all directions in Ukraine. New satellite images appear to show troops assembled near Ukrainian hydroelectric power plant with armored vehicles and trucks gathered nearby. Ukraine's capital city is on the verge of an all-out assault from Russian forces, and a high-rise building was hit. But Ukraine's president is vowing to keep fighting, hinting that there is an international consensus to cut Russia off from the global banking system known as SWIFT. Disconnecting them from SWIFT is one of the, uh, we believe, very effective Actions. As the fighting continues, the Biden administration has authorized another $350 million in military aid for Ukraine's government. We have to stay the course with the rest of our allies. And in the meantime, we're supplying defensive weaponry and economic assistance. Police in the Russian city of Yekaterinburg on Saturday detained more than 50 people who were protesting against Russia's military actions, while authorities threatened to block media reports that contained what Moscow described as false information. At least 467 people were detained today in 34 Russian cities at anti-war rallies across the country. We've also learned the White House again announced it is the U.S. is backing the removal of, quote, selected Russian banks from SWIFT, which is that international banking system.